Welcome back. The fight for American Indian rights has taken many turns over the centuries, but one modern-day maverick has always used a very direct approach, even if it means confronting the military. Now he's insisting on building a free and independent republic for his people, the Lakota. Russell Means has made a name for himself in some unusual ways. He starred next to Daniel Day-Lewis in the Hollywood blockbuster movie The Last of the Mohicans, which he describes as one of the most accurate portrayals of American Indians. Means was even painted by the legendary artist Andy Warhol and took on the U.S. National Guard in a revival of the Battle of the Wounded Knee. Russell Means now wants to build the Republic of Lakota on 240,000 square kilometers of land cutting into the states of Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana and Wyoming. Russell Means is seeking investment and international recognition for his republic and says it will be tax-free and based on a matriarchal political system. Well, we ask, how does Russell Means propose to separate these lands from the U.S. rule and what happens to those already living there? Join us with your questions. The numbers are on your screen. Russell Means, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Well, sir, you've claimed this, this large you know, 240,000 kilometers, uh, square kilometers, roughly uh, 93,000 square miles, currently or literally in the heart of uh, the United States, um, declared and declared at the Republic of Lakota. How is the U.S. government responding? Well, as Gandhi has said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. So that right now they're ignoring us, which is what we wish and are thankful for, because it allows us to, speak, to continue the rebuilding of the foundation of our freedom as lawful and legal independent country. Understand that the United States of America claims to be a nation of laws. Consequently, we are using those very same laws of theirs to hog tie them, to, to tie them up so that they cannot. And this is totally nonviolent. They cannot attack us. The American people wouldn't let them. Besides, we're only 10, in our existing country, in those five state area, we're only 10% of the population. The rest are nine, 99% white and we are welcoming all peoples of all the sacred colors to become citizens of Lakota because we understand the sacredness of the human being. Now presumably those who are living on on those lands now if uh, you you do become the Republic of Lakota they will they presumably would have to change their citizenship. Yes and there's two main reasons why and I've never understood the pa patriarchal systems that somehow convinces its own population that income tax and property tax are a necessary evil for civilization. It's absurd, absolutely absurd, those two taxes. And people have asked me, well, how can you run a government without income tax? And I say, wait a minute, the United States of America, for longer than 50% of its existence, went without an income tax. They didn't have one until 1913, less than 100 years ago, 95 to be exact. So it has been done, and property tax, the most onerous and stupid tax in all of the human existence, where you never own your property and you can't even be sure of passing it down to your next generations because of taxes, we're going to eliminate those taxes and consequently have, have a political system that is run by consensus because having two major political parties in an alleged republic that guarantees you individual rights, it's impossible. It's impossible to, have, to guarantee individual rights with just two political parties. Right. You're asking for exactly this is what's happening. You're asking for another Bush and a bush and a bush and a bush and a bush. Well, let's, let's get an email that came from uh, Norwich in England for you, uh, Russell. And this uh, from Paula Varley says, establishing a matriarchal uh, republic is an amazing idea, but I'm skeptical that any part of the US could withdraw from the whole. So, I mean, if you're really honest about the logistics of this, is it feasible to be able to be so independent in the middle of what is obviously a very, you know, dynamic international country? As I stated, it's very feasible because it's lawful. And not only nationally, according to the Constitution of the United States, but to the law of treaties, which every country is a signatory to. And we withdrew from our treaties unilaterally, which puts us in the 
the legal and lawful framework of free and independent. Now, we understand the processes of becoming recognized, and we're working on that. We have four strategies, economic, political, health, and education. Those are our four main strategies towards the rebuilding of our nationhood. Let, let me ask you about the, uh, the kind of support you have from uh, other American Indians. Um, I gather the Lakota tribe itself, your tribe, hasn't fully sanctioned this. <laughs> That's the colonial apparatus. Listen, there are two regimes that follow the example of Indian policies of the United States of America. That's Nazism. Back in the 1920s, Adolf Hitler wrote that the United States of America has the perfect solution on how to deal with the unwanted races, and that's to create the concentration camps. He called them labor camps, it's like the reservation system of America. Consequently, the uh, genocide against gypsies, Jewish people, homosexuals at all happened during World War II. That country is no longer in existence because of that policy. And then there was apartheid in South Africa. There's the West Bank in Israel. Carbon copies of the reservation system. Now, the apartheid system is gone, but you still have apartheid in, South, in, in America. And yet no one focuses on that. And because America backs the apartheid system in the West Bank, that place is tied up. So consequently, what we are saying and what the American people are sympathetic to as well as my own is the fact that legally and lawfully, I'm gonna keep hammering that home, is that we are free and independent. Okay. And we have the general support not only of the American people and my own people, but also worldwide. And I want to say this, in the history of patriarchy, never has an empire been defeated from without. It's always fomented its own destruction from within. Russell, we had, a, we had an the email. Republic of Lakota. Well, so, you know, we had an email that came in from New Zealand. Zelina from New Zealand, uh, who also guys, goes by the name Magpie Woman, wrote in saying, I doubt that the U.S. will ever let the Lakota withdraw. If they cannot return their native lands, then appropriate compensation should be paid out to the generations. They should come uh, to talk to New Zealand's Maoris. Now, uh, could, could, I mean, do you see some sort of solution of uh, financial compensation if you can't reach agreement on actually taking the land? Of course not. That is not our concern. The reason we have become free and independent again is because of the genocidal practices of the United States government, which are ongoing. The average Lakota speaker's age of a fluent Lakota speaker is 65 years of age. We're on the cusp of becoming extinct. Because once we lose our language, we lose our world view. We lose, we lose the taste out of our mouths. As an African woman in the East Coast of the United States stated about what slavery did to them. And we lose the essence, our world view. So we cannot lose our language. Our, our, the, the life expectancy of our men is the lowest in the world, 43.9 years. The women life expectancy is 52 years. So that's of the Lakota, my people. We cannot continue. We have no place to live. Money, you can bur burn with the nod of a buffalo's head. The land is forever. We had a, uh, actually, uh, Zelina, who goes by Magpie Woman, also sent, sent a very cryptic thing in her email that said, uh, the, the minute you become independent, you should extradite Leonard. And I was intrigued. She said, you'd know who Leonard was. Does that ring a bell? Leonard Peltier is a Leonard Peltier is a political prisoner of the American government. And yes, his, his, his situation is, is very unlawful and illegal. Nevertheless, in, uh, in our struggle, it is not unlike the ANC and the Palestinian struggle and all freedom struggles, in which when we, as revolutionaries, when we go into the struggle, we understand the risks, imprisonment and or death. So we don't want anyone focusing on someone in prison. And that takes away from their energies towards freedom of the people. Okay. And that's what this revolution is all about. One revolution, we return to what we were, free and independent with our languages 
and with our health intact, Russell, along with our land. Patrick's on the line from the UK. Let's squeeze him in with a question here. Patrick, your question for Russell Means, please. Oh yeah, thank you, Rizka, Hi. for this. Thank you very much for this opportunity given to me to express myself. Yeah. I'm calling from England, but I'm an African. Okay. I would like to share these views of the speakers in Denver that he did mention about apartheid in South Africa. I was in South Africa, I work in South Africa, and the whole African continent is sharing the same pains they are going through. The, what he speaks, what he's saying actually right now on air is the reality of what we are living in Africa. What can really be done to safeguard the total integrity of African people, the total sovereignty of African people, because apparently we look free, but in reality we are still colonies. What so, can you help? Okay. okay. So uh, do you, do you see a, a, a Russell? Do you see a parallel that that might be applied once you know once your action is taken here that might actually help Africans? Because Patrick sees a parallel with the African people and the Lakota people. Yes, well, all indigenous people. I believe the entire world should return to a matriarchal system, which is a balanced system. But more importantly, you should, when you decolonize oneself, you have to get rid of those mag imaginary lines that the colonists left, because that's what divides you. You know, you don't have respect for your relatives' visions in your own country. Witness, witness Rwanda and all the more recent genocidal patterns of what those imaginary lines the colonials left have have dealt you that kind of a genocidal uh, hand like in a game of cards so you that self-destruction from colonization so we need to get rid of those imaginary lines and reassert true sovereignty which is respect for your relatives visions which goes back to pre-colonial discovery well, Russell, you know, we, we barely had a chance to touch on your uh, very colorful life. I hope we get a chance to chat with you again. Thank you so much for being with us. I hope so also. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Join us on Monday when we look at how Arabs are portrayed in Hollywood post 9-11 with author and activist Jack Shaheen. From me and the team, we'll see you next time.